professor in the uh, Department of Urban and uh, Economic Geography in Beijing University. Uh, that's where she received her, her PhD. She has worked as a visiting scholar in Yale Center of Industrial Ecology in 2004 and the London International Institute of Industrial Environmental Economics in Sweden in 2014. Uh, her work um, has been focused on the extended producer responsibility in e-waste management in China. Um, she has worked in that area for many years with the support of, uh, from China's uh, National Science Foundation. Right. Thank you, thank you, uh, Chai Hua. And uh, it's a great honor for me to be here and uh, share our recent works with you all. Um, just as the uh, last uh, presentation has talked about the Zero Waste City uh, initiative in China. So China has uh, initiated uh, quite a big project to promote circular economy at the uh, city level. And actually we have uh, undertaken uh, some kind of very local uh, uh, grassroots work uh, for the same uh, <coughs> for the same goals. So we initiated some community-based recycling program in Beijing in last uh, five five years. So uh, this, uh, this, this we are in, um, uh, we are undergoing a dramatic urban waste management uh, transition now in China. So uh, just as the uh, chair has talked about, we uh, currently. Many people in this uh, field talk about the compulsory garbage sorting uh, in Shanghai. Uh, actually, before 17, I mean, things has happened for quite a long time. In uh, 2000 years, in, at that time, the government has already initiated uh, 10 cities uh, garbage sorting, community garbage sorting program at that time. But in most cases, all these kind of activities are led by the NGOs. So uh, it's quite difficult to promote people, to persuade people to participate. And well, on the one hand, people complain that whenever we garbage, uh, even we sorted the garbage, actually, at the end, the waste managers just mix everything together. But on the other hand, the Infrastructure, I mean, the waste management sector complain that nobody sort garbage. Why we should uh, provide us, uh, to uh, de deal with it in separately? So let's just give me to a, uh, give me to a, to just cannot solve the problems. So uh, actually, even at that time, we have some uh, successful story. Just like in Shanghai, we have an uh, iPhone NGO. They started uh, from a very small communities, only about 500 uh, households. And uh, every, uh, actually, the local communities, they have some willingness to do this. And then they uh, ask for help from the NGO, and then they collect it. It established a very small scale grassroots uh, initiative for garbage sorting at the community level. But this kind of work is very, I mean, very limited. And it's when the government really wants to promote this kind of thing, the style of NGOs just cannot satisfy the requirement of the local government. So since 2017, now we see a different kind of local governance for this kind of thing. They, uh, they, they, they uh, established kind of PPP program, private-public partnership. So they have this kind of contract with enterprises to do this. And now we can see what happened in uh, Shanghai. In one, one, uh, on the one hand, for the uh, waste management part, it's kind of provide a separated base for the communities. So every people have to, and every household have to uh, uh, sort their garbage into four streams and put everything into different bins. And on the other hand, how to make people to do that? There is this kind of social mobilization quite similar to what they've done by the NGOs. So uh, for me, I, I think this is a kind of uh, program, mainly is still limited the waste management system. I mean, the, uh, how the government would like to plan 
the infrastructure for garbage uh, disposal, and on the other hand, mobilize the social or the societies to have some behavior change for that. Uh, but, but actually, for us, for me, uh, for for our uh, team, we are uh, trying to study. Uh, we are uh, conducting some kind of the work on EPR for e-waste management, and we actually find several uh, emerging new business models for post-consumer recycling, largely because of EPR. So, because the government want to establish. Uh, certified or formal recycling uh, uh, facilities for electronics. They, they didn't expect this, but they tried to give subs uh, subsidy to the end, um, the end uh, recycling. And that created a market for collecting e-waste from the consumers directly. So there is two parts. On the one part, 90% actually collected from the informal collectors. And on about 10%, the recyclers, the certified formal recyclers, collected electronics, waste electronics directly from the consumers. So that kind of effort has actually created a different, very different kind of business models in the collection. So we define that into three, uh, all of them use IT solutions. So uh, actually, in these kind of uh, business models, they have to uh, balance between various parties of different stakeholders. For example, even for the consumers, it should be convenience. And for the producers, actually, if you want producers to join in to give you some support, you have to give some kind of traceability, traceability of the product you collected. And for recyclers, either for informal recyclers or formal recyclers, they would like to have some profitability. And for public, if you want the government to support you, you should this system to be reliable, especially for environmental protection. And for collection, because this is so many different players working in the collection, it needs some kind of tolerance for the hybrid of collection channels. So we can see uh, three quite different models. First, the pure internet platform. Actually, just provide a internet uh, channel to exchange, uh, to, to uh, provide an online trading platform to bridge the transactions between the consumer and recyclers. That's very simple, actually, for the uh, IT com companies to do that. But in some cases, they did it quite successfully. For example, in Taolu. It used to uh, uh, occupy more than 90% of uh, waste mobile phones online trading uh, in maybe uh, two years ago. But now the competition increased and actually did not work so well now. And also visual bar, they work with the uh, producers, for example, Huawei or uh, many famous brands in China. And they uh, gave the, uh, they collected the, uh, with phones from the consumers, and then gave coupons to the uh, people that can buy new products. Uh, another kind of uh, thing is the automatic reverse lending machine. That actually learned from the uh, developed countries. So maybe here some people come from the North Europe, in Sweden, in uh, uh, Norway, or in uh, Denmark, so people are familiar with this. This kind of lending machine, but actually you put your uh, uh, cans or bottles, and then you got some coupons. Uh, actually, it's a kind of uh, prepay. You actually, you prepay for that uh, bottle uh, things also. But this kind of things, when they came to China, actually the entrepreneurs it's, uh, it invented more things. So they collect the mobile phones. How close? Many things. Well, we can income in Beijing. Yeah, uh, it's a company collected various uh, things. And also, I we show this is another country focused on mobile phone collections. They just established their uh, machines in uh, shopping malls, and also they got the uh, 
product from the consumer and then give coupons to the uh, uh, for, for new products. Uh, both model one and model two actually mainly focus on things that still have value on the market. So people can make more money from the discarded products. And the third one is actually what we are working on, a community-based recycling program. <coughs> so these kind of things actually try to teach people how to sort their sorting garbage at the home. Um, what people do this? Actually, first, the uh, formal recycling companies would like to go to the community to, to buy uh, waste per e-waste. But when they came to the residential community, they find it's not efficient to do only collect e-waste because people don't throw the e-waste every day. So if you came to a community, actually you have expanded to all kinds of waste. And then if local government gives you some other uh, additional uh, support, it will be very efficient, very, there is good reason to do it for all kinds of waste. So this model aims to collect discarded products to the household directly, combined with promotion of garbage sorting. Uh, this kind of uh, activities actually generated uh, a lot of new uh, initiatives in many, many cities. So for example, uh, first in Shanghai, Ala, and then in, uh, we, we have Xiang Jiaoti in Beijing, uh, Huizhou in Wuhan, and Song Sangde in Xiamen, Green Earth in Chengdu. And many of them have disappeared already. And the new ones come out because the cost is very low. So this kind of activities just came up and some of them got some support from the government and some of them just don't get funding from the uh, funds, uh, the NGOs, and there's very different reasons to do that. So we work with one of them, the Green Earth in Chengdu. They are one of the uh, pioneers in this kind of uh, business model. And uh, they, we just use their solutions to do our experiment in Beijing. So this is our ongoing uh, project in Beijing. Uh, now we are uh, got a new project on the National R&D <coughs> Program Solid Waste. And actually this work uh, is not starting now. We started this work back to the uh, 2013, and uh, most of the, our study area is in northern Beijing. So here, uh, here is Tiananmen, and uh, now we are around here, so Tsinghua University. So in this part area is the uh, dramatic expansion of urban areas in Beijing in the last decades. So a lot of big uh, residential communities newly constructed in this area and also a lot of uh, informal resident uh, habitats because uh, uh, people come into the cities. So quite uh, dynamic areas in, uh, in urbanization. So our starting point can actually comes from the waste villages. So it's uh, around here, so Dong Xiaopo. Actually before Dong Xiaopo, uh, we uh, already we started e-waste in 2005. And 2005, the, there, was a, there used to be an e-waste recycling center just besides Tsinghua University. And that being around here. Uh, around here. So uh, that part has been demolished in around 2010. And then many uh, recyclers moving northward just to the urban Three. And they found a new place in Dong Xiaokou. And this place, because of good transportation uh, conditions, so in, within uh, five years, <coughs> they uh, concentrated more than uh, 30,000 uh, informal recyclers there. And they have an uh, expanded uh, collection network cover many of northern cities. So that's around, uh, they, they can take care of around uh, one third of discards in Beijing for recycling, not the uh, waste, but for recycling. And uh, um, so you can see, uh, actually, they, here actually you can see 
almost everything you can find in your home. So everything some people collected and distorted, uh, sorted according to the materials. And then actually it's built a linkage between the communities and the waste villages. So people uh, with a bicycle, they collect the things, they stay in the residential uh, community, collect the discard, and then use the bicycle to uh, for some meat peddler and then going to the uh, waste uh, villages. And then in the villages, this kind of, you can see the uh, people from this one, people come out from the inner city to the west villages. They use bicycles to take the goods. And then in the west villages, after sorting, it becomes, you can see the truck, so it became the materials and going out the city, going out of Beijing. Uh, uh, go out, uh, went out of Beijing. So this is the uh, market, how to get marketing. So these products could be going to the Hebei, Shandong, or for electronics, then they go to the uh, Guangdong, southern China. So this is the vast informal network from the residential companies to the waste managers and to the productions. However, this kind of uh, informal network has been demolished. Uh, before that, has, it has been demolished times and times. I mean, first demolish, then move outside. Demolish, move outside. So, but this time, it's quite difficult for them to keep moving on. There is two reasons. One, we have, I mean, on the one hand, we are in, moving into the aging society. So, shortage of labor. And on the other hand, you see people bicycle, trying products to the this village. That's almost impossible now. Because now if you would want like, to find a new place, it almost you have to find it out of Beijing. It's impossible for you to bicycle there. So we need new solutions for that. At that time, some people, I mean when the uh with the village being demolished at 2013, some recyclers working there told us that they would like to have the government to give them one piece of land to build the market again. But I told them it's impossible because the, this kind of things just cannot sustain in the future. So what we should do in the future, at that time I, we think that we should rebuild the recycling system from the very bottom of the residential communities at that time. At that time in 2013, we tried to initiate a project with some kind of new model at that time. So we initiated an experiment in Zhenggezhuang. So Zhenggezhuang is not far from the Dongxiaokou. So in here, the, this is the uh, urban village. We tried to do this in some, okay, we try to do this in some kind of um, more formal villages, but it's quite difficult. And this is the urban village. What does it mean? That means the local villagers demolished their old cottage and built them into a city. So they made big money from that and didn't lose their land. Because of this, they have some kind of autonomous. So we can work with them to do something we would like to do. <laughs> so we, we introduced the system of the um, we introduced the system of the uh, the uh, green earth. Right? You got some coupons, so you give coupons to the uh, households and the households if they sort in the garbage accordingly they deal with it some coupons from us, and they can use the coupon to buy things on the online. And initially, we worked with the, uh, with the company who provide uh, cleaning and garbage transportation for this community. But 
after two months, we found that it's impossible to do that because this kind of new, I mean, new innovation is difficult to be adopted to a old <laughs> system. So finally, we find we are lucky. We find a wife, a husband and wife of junk buyer, so informal collector. So they are interested in what we are doing here, and they would like to work for us. And after three, for three years, they work here and take care of the whole system for us in this community. So that system uh, stopped in 2016, and when our uh, last program stopped. So this is what we to get from uh, this experiment. We can see the household community, the registered households, about uh, when we got 500 households registered to our program, and the participant rate about 15%, uh, and uh, uh, among which about 15% actually built some kind of habits to do this. And we can also see the people, uh, how many people in each buildings uh, participate in our things, in our activities. And after the program, we also compared our research um, results with uh, communities using similar uh, technology solutions. So, so uh, we just compared with from communities from Chengdu and in our colleagues working in inner cities in the two different, I mean, work with the sanitary companies and the the informal collectors. So our conclusion is that, uh, first we find that for us, it's not good uh, to do this. We need some kind of companies to do that, PPP. And for so, uh, other kind, we see that uh, behavior change takes time to do that. So uh, actually, uh, after our uh, experiment, we see, uh, actually in 2018, we, in Changping, we got a uh, company actually got the PPP contract from the local government. And here is what they did now. They provide encore door-to-door -door collection in the communities. So they use by track holes to collect it from community, and then they have trucks to take things away. So they also provide coupons uh, through the code bar uh, to the consumers. And they also have the sorting centers. And they use the information system. On the one hand, they provide information to the consumers. And on the other hand, they can track in the material flows. And what I would like to share is how this changed through uh, two generations. Here is the father. He came in Beijing for with the pig for about 30 years ago. And using money, he supported his son to go in colleges in Beijing. Now this son establishes. And actually, we inter, uh, they had discussed with many years ago when we did our experiment. <laughs> so I'm glad to see this. So this is service coverage of their in Changping. Uh, and here is the overall participation till now. So last year, it just initiated in 2018, and it's just ongoing now. And the, the, we still, with the PPP, the same company, same College we see diversified participation rate. And we would like to, now we, we try to build a model to uh, explain the behavior change in different communities. And we, I think we should include in the local factors, not only individually, but also community level. We think it's a very important uh, thing that affect people's behavior. So finally, my reflections. I think uh, for the waste, uh, zero waste cities or uh, circular economies, we are more keen for big stories. But actually, we need some micro things that happen locally. Uh, the behavior change actually embedded in the diversity side of local institutions, called for innovative micro policy. And I also think, as a researcher for myself, we should go from observation into actions. So we need some tool for action-oriented research. And we also need some methods that can help scaling up local best practices while, represent, while respecting the diversification of various local uh, conditions. Thank you.